Uh, good afternoon, Minister. My name is Alan Honor. I'm a lawyer at the Democracy Fund. We share status with the D JCCF and Citizens for Freedom. Can we please pull up um, SSM.CAN40265? Minister, while we're waiting for that, you will recall that on February the 14th, at or around 4.30 p.m., you held a press conference with the Prime Minister, as well as other ministers, and at that press conference, the Prime Minister announced the invocation of the Emergencies Act. If we could scroll down to the bottom uh, of this document, about halfway down the fourth page. No, I think we have the wrong document, 2665. That's it. If we can scroll down to the bottom of the document. Can I see the top of the document, please, first? Okay. Okay, at the bottom of the document, we see that this is an email from Emily Cantor of the PMO's office, and it's dated February the 13th, 2022. And it is sent to David Taylor, among others. Can you confirm for me <clears throat> that David Taylor was your Director of Communications? Uh, I can confirm to you that he still is my Director of Communications. Okay, thank you. And this email is referring to a noon press conference happening on the 14th uh, with the Prime Minister and a number of ministers. And it says... I'm not a party to the email, so I'll take your word for it. That's right, but you can see it in front of you, right? And it says at the press conference... Um, is to provide an update on the federal government response to the blockade as well as the Ukraine. That is correct, that's what it says. And that ended up being the press conference at which um, you and the Prime Minister uh, announced that uh, the Emergencies Act was being invoked. Uh, that would be the timing of it. Okay, so let's just scroll up to the top, sorry, the bottom of the second page. That's great, and if we can just scroll down a little bit so we can see this entire email. That's good, thank you. Here we have um, an email from Vanessa Haig Musa at the PMO's office saying, presser tracking for 4 p.m. This is not to be shared publicly until first minister's meeting over and PM updated itinerary is out. Do you see that? I do. And minister, I put it to you <clears throat> that the reason this press conference was not to be shared publicly until after the First Minister's meeting is because the Prime Minister and Cabinet had already decided to invoke the Emergencies Act before the First Minister's meeting took place, and it would not look right if the press conference, which would ultimately announce the Emergencies Act, was scheduled before the end of that First Minister's meeting. You're completely off base. Okay, well, um, let's see. The, the communications teams, I mean, first of all, I'm not part of the email, but um, the, the decision-making process was tracking. The decision, the final decision was not made until the Prime Minister did, but communications teams will prepare for the eventuality that this might happen. I have seen in my political career in oh, the past seven years, no, I, you asked me the yes. question, sir. But, sir I've I seen, I have seen be... in my political career tracking announcements. You see the word tracking? Yes. Tracking yes. announcements get completely pulled at various stages, including the last minute. Thank you, so sir. You I only cannot, have five minutes. You if I could just read, continue with no, this email. But you want the context of this email. Because no, I don't, I don't want the well, context. I just want, I would like to, I just give want you the context to put it to you it. to see if you agree with it or not, and you disagreed. I, I, I disagree strongly that this 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 means absolutely nothing. Thank you, sir. Then if you made. disagree, I would like to take you to another part of this email. Um, you'll see that this email that we're looking at right now is at 11.05, and obviously from the context here, the First Minister's meeting has not yet finished. You can agree with that, yes? Uh, is 11.05 the time? Because there have been some emails that well, have Well, but from the context, DMT. it says, this is not to be shared publicly until the First Minister's meeting is over. Okay. So from the context, the First Minister's meeting is not over at the time this email is written, correct? As I had said, the communications teams will be preparing for the possibility that there will be announcement they do not go with it unless it happens. And Sir, but they do agree. have to prepare. They do have to prepare. They're doing their jobs. They do have to prepare. I'm sorry that you don't Sir, like I, I that answer, but it is the truth. I just want to know if you agree with me that the first minister's meeting had not taken place yet. 
I'm not a party to the email, so okay. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it in terms of what it says. But they're just planning for, for okay, their so job, sir, quite frankly. If we can, if we can continue here. Um, this email says, as discussed with you, Minister Lametti will also have brief remarks. And if we look up the page, there's a response to this email from David Taylor, your communications director, saying that he is drafting your remarks. Do you see that? Uh, yes, I do. And the timing of that email is 11.06. That's exactly one email, one minute after the email we just read. That's correct. And so, sir, what we see here is that David Taylor is drafting remarks, your remarks, for the 4.30 meeting, meeting at which the invocation of the Emergencies Act was announced. And he's drafting those remarks before the end of the First Minister's meeting. Yes, but it's all hypothetical because well, if I, because I, put it to you, I have seen it, you can put it to me and I'll give you the answer. Which sure, is, then I put it to it you. It is sir, not final you... until it's final. I have seen these announcements pulled mm -hmm. five seconds before it's supposed to happen. They are preparing in order that it might happen. That is their job. That's why I pay David Taylor. And the same is true for PMO communications and everyone else. That's sir, good governance. You... We're preparing for the eventuality that it will happen but it does not happen until the final decision is made. Commissioner, may I have two more minutes? Sure. So I put it to you, um, you'll agree with me that the, the remarks you did make at 4.30 were in fact about invoking the Emergencies Act. And I will not put it, uh, I will not call it out, but it's in the record, is OTT 407224-0001. That is what happened at 4.30 that day on the 14th. I made remarks only after the final decision was made. Okay, can we please pull up ssm.can40837? So this is a, a text message exchange between you and Greg Fergus, and if we can just stop for a moment. He says, Marco is talking, talking, talking at the meeting with, and we can't see it because it's covered up by the date, which is February 13th, it says caucus. And if we just go down a little bit, mm -hmm. we talk a little bit about our, that it's you and the purple. Our only other legal option is the Emergencies Act. Mr. Fergus says, that's exactly where people are at. It is where I am at. You respond and me and Marco, but he's being a good soldier. If we can scroll down, now we have Mr. Fergus say at 1.28 p.m. on the 13th, 13th, consensus from our call, one, use the Emergencies Act. He goes through a couple of other criteria, but let's just scroll down a little bit. And you don't contradict him, do you? You don't contradict him at any point that that was the consensus coming out of your call on the 13th. He, he's not a member of cabinet, so I'm not going to confirm or deny that. He's a colleague. He's a caucus colleague. This was, if you scroll up, please, mm -hmm. this is after a caucus call. So those are his reflections after a caucus call. They are, they are, uh, I think, a good reflection in, in, in Mr. Fergus's view right. of, of what this was. Um, and I think this confirms, quite frankly, that a decision had a final decision had not been taken. Well, even let's go though, through the text even though I, I must admit that I was now at the point by February 13th where I thought the Emergencies Act should be invoked. Mm. It is I, I prepared my colleagues from the beginning for the possibility that this would happen as I as a good attorney general would do, as a good minister of justice would do from my experience from the, the pandemic, where I also prepared my colleagues and we didn't use it. By the time we got to the, this last, this third weekend, I had come to that conclusion. That's evident here. But as you can see, no decision had been taken. So the, the, the text message is in, in evidence. We'll leave it for submissions. If I can just put one more document to you, and this is ssm.can408754. So I, I started off this examination by talking to you about the invocation of the Emergencies Act. Now I just want to talk to you very briefly um, for about 30 seconds about its revocation. Sure. This is another email exchange between you and Greg Fergus. And he says, on February 23rd, I am glad we ended the EA, but it would have been more appropriate if we waited until Friday 
44 hours after the vote seems unseemly. And your response is, no, we needed to stay ahead of the NDP and the senators were saying that they would vote against based on their view that there was no longer an emergency. That is your text message with Mr. Fergus. It is indeed. And, I, and although we did have the votes, and although the vast majority of senators understood that they were being asked to vote on the Emergencies Act at the time at which it was invoked, there were a number that didn't understand that. We had said from the beginning, sir, that we would not keep the act a minute longer than, than we needed to. It's something we said to the NDP, and it's something that we said to senators. And I'm being completely consistent here to say that we needed to be ahead of that in terms of keeping our promise in order to, uh, in order to not keep the act in place a minute longer than necessary, and that's precisely what we did. And this is my last question. I put it to you that this text message shows that in fact you would have kept the Emergencies Act in place for longer had it not been for the fact that you were concerned that the NDP would res withdraw their, res their support and that the senators would vote against? I reject that premise. There are other, there are other text messages that you will see where we have uh, predicted that we had sufficient votes. We'll leave that to submissions. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you. With your support, our lawyers will be in Ottawa for the next few weeks, trying to hold our government accountable for its improper declaration of an emergency. To follow our work in the inquiry, visit the democracyfund.ca slash commission, and please consider making a tax-deductible donation to help contribute to our fight. We thank you so much for your support.